Steps for a successful Deck Pro application. First, surface preparation. Second, joint sealant application. Third, primer. Fourth, base coat application. Fifth, intermediate coat. Sixth, seed and back roll or seed and lock. Last, top coat application. Tools, safety vest, hard hat, gloves, rollers, squeegees, vacuum, grinder, dust mask, safety glasses, ear protection, drill, mixing paddles, stirrers, and spatula. Substrate requirements. Good bond strength between the overlay and substrate is a key factor in performance of our Seek Elastic Deck Pro systems. The substrate must be clean, dry, and free of all contaminants such as dirt, oil, grease, coatings, etc. The concrete was cured for a minimum of 28 days, has a minimum compressive strength of 3,000 PSI for pedestrian traffic and 4,000 PSI for vehicular traffic, the minimum pull-off strength of 220 PSI. Inspection. Visual inspection allows you to determine in a quick way the suspicion of various pollution or surface defects such as honeycombing. Hammering sound allows you to determine the presence of delamination, overlay bonding problems, etc. Chain dragging is used to sound out delamination. Normal, solid bonded concrete has a dull sound when the chain is dragged. When delamination is found, the pitch of the sound rises like a hollow sound due to the low thickness of the solid concrete. <laughs> Vacuum shot blasting. This is the industry standard for surface preparation of concrete. Vacuum shot blasting means that a machine projects a large number of abrasives towards the surface of the concrete and this way roughens the surface. A wheel in the machine uses centrifugal force to propel the abrasive agents against the concrete. The abrasives are then drawn back into the machine to be used again. The dust will be separated by the use of a dust collector. Shot blasting is the most efficient way to prep the substrate. A concrete scarifier is equipped with a rotating cutting tool that rotates in a very high speed and this way tears the surface apart. Scarifying creates a lot of dust, therefore capable vacuum cleaner must be used. On the other hand, scarifying can damage and loosen the upper layer of the concrete, therefore it is mandatory that a scarified surface must be shot blasted or properly leveled afterwards. Sometimes shot blasting is not sufficient enough to remove the old coating, so you have to use a more aggressive type of surface prep like a scarifier. Grinding. Surface grinders with diamond grinding tools are used to remove high spots on a concrete surface, such as removing coatings, mastics, urethane, epoxy, and other surface contaminants. Capable dust collector must be used during grinding. Grinding is the most used surface prep over small areas or areas with limited access. Surface Profile ICRI has determined nine different guidelines for proper surface preparation and has developed profile replica blocks to give a visual point of reference for the user. Each profile carries a CSP number ranging from a baseline of 1, being nearly flat, through 9, being very rough. Sika's recommendation is the concrete has to be prepared to achieve a latence-free and contaminant-free open textured surface by shot blasting or equivalent mechanical means, CSP3 to CSP4 as per ICRI guidelines. In this example, the substrate matches CSP5. Sika Tramex. Moisture content should be less than 4% by weight, measured by a Sika Tramex. Sika Tramex is for measuring the moisture content instantly on concrete floors without the need to damage the surface. 
Sika Tramax is an electronic moisture meter operating on the principle of impedance measurement. The electrodes, which are mounted on the base, transmit low frequency signals to the concrete floor. In operation, it compares the change in impedance caused by the presence of dampness and shows the moisture content in percent by weight on the display. Turn the Tramax on and press the electrodes directly to the surface. Then read moisture percentage from the top line. Moisture content should be less than 4%. Plastic Sheet Test First, place a piece of plastic foil about 2 feet by 2 feet on the concrete substrate. Second, fix the sheet with tape. Third, wait 24 hours. Fourth, check whether there is condensation underneath. If yes, this is an indication that the concrete contains moisture. Place the plastic foil on the substrate surface and begin to tape down the edges. Wait 24 hours and then check for moisture. Calcium Chloride Test Moisture Vapor Emission Rate of Concrete This method shall not be used over lightweight or gypsum concrete. It is the rate of moisture vapor emission measured in pounds of moisture over 1,000 square foot area during a 24-hour period. This test indicates the rate of moisture vapor emission from the surface of a concrete floor and whether or not that floor is acceptable to receive the final coating. The test reflects the condition of the concrete surface at the time of the test. Acceptable value is less than 25 pounds per 1,000 square feet. Values above 25 pounds will require venting of the deck. Take out the calcium chloride, remove the lid, and place open container onto the surface. Remove all plastic edges and from the plastic lid, and then place firmly on the surface, completely sealing the calcium chloride. Now cover the lid with the caution box to warn nearby pedestrians that there was a moisture test in place. Write down all information on the calcium chloride lid and place onto caution box. After 24 hours, remove all the covers and quickly place the lid back onto the container. Place calcium chloride container onto scale for final weight. Please see your test's instructions manual for final formula to find final results. Ambient conditions. Ambient temperature is minimum 40 degrees Fahrenheit and maximum 95 degrees Fahrenheit. Substrate temperature is minimum 40 degrees Fahrenheit and maximum 95 degrees Fahrenheit. Relative air humidity is maximum 95%. Add 5 degrees Fahrenheit to the dew point to get your surface temperature. Dew point plus 5 degrees equals your surface temperature. The dew point is the point at which a surface becomes wet with condensation. An example from the upcoming video has an ambient temperature of 51.1 degrees Fahrenheit, a relative humidity of 31%, so the dew point will equal 20 degrees Fahrenheit. To find your dew point, look at your ambient air temperature, then at relative humidity on the chart. Once you have your dew point, add 5 degrees Fahrenheit to find the minimum substrate temperature that will allow you to go over with coating. Deck Pro Preparation Concrete substrates must be mechanically prepared using abrasive blast cleaning to remove cement latents, existing coatings, and achieve a gripping profile that is clean, dry, and free from dirt, grease, oil, and any other subsurface contamination. High spots must be removed by grinding. Weak concrete must be removed, and surface defects such as bug holes and voids must be fully exposed. Repairs to the substrate, filling of bug holes or voids, and surface leveling must be carried out using appropriate Sika product. Professional equipment is required to achieve a functioning deck, such as scarifier, grinder, vacuum shot blaster, and vacuum cleaner. 
Carefully use a shot blaster and grinders for a complete surface preparation. Applying the sealant. Make sure the proper nozzle is selected and the nozzle is cut to match the width of the joint. This will support a more effective application. Also, make sure the nozzle angle is cut in a way to best position sealant flow into the joint. This is typically a 45 degree angle. Angle the gun at approximately 30 degrees and keep a steady flow of sealant in front of the nozzle. It should be like pushing a ball ahead of the nozzle. Make sure adequate sealant is getting pressed against the substrate for proper wetting. Underfilling the joint will lead to improper sealant adhesion, while overfilling will create excess sealant and possibly get onto the surfaces of the sides of the joint. Carefully remove the lid from the pail. Note that the tint base lid is red and the limestone lid is gray. Open component B and pour entire contents of component B into the pail of component A. Add entire contents of the color pack into the pail. Mix for three to five minutes to achieve a tooling the joint eliminates voids, bubbles, and ensures effective wetting of the sealant to the substrate. Tooling should also create a clean, neat, and concave shape on the surface. The ideal joint sealant shape is like an hourglass, which supports proper movement of the sealant. Select a tooling knife that mirrors the width of the joint. Do not use any water, solvent, or alcohol while tooling the sealant. Tooling the sealant in one pass is the optimal method. Crack repairs. For non-structural cracks up to 1 16th of an inch, a detail application is not required. Apply base coat embedded with Sika Flex Tape Heavy 3 inch wide centered over the crack. For cracks and joints over 1 16th of an inch up to 1 quarter of an inch, route and seal with a Sika Flex sealant. Apply Sika Elastic Primer over the entire deck, including sealed cracks, allowing them to become tack free. Apply detail coat 4 inch wide embedded with Sika Flex Tape Heavy centered over the crack. Cracks and joints between 1 quarter of an inch and 1 inch, route and seal with Sika Flex sealant. Apply Seek Elastic Primer over the entire deck, including sealed cracks, and allow it to become tack free. Apply Detail Coat 4 inch wide, embedded with Seek Flex Tape Heavy, centered over the crack. Typically required when applied directly to concrete, plywood, or metal. Optional primerless applications. Recoat primer is typically required when recoating an existing system. Causes a reduction of pinholes and outgassing. Surface compressive and pull out strength improvement. For application, use a roller, squeegee, and back roll, or spray and back roll. If moisture present is less than 4%, use regular primer. If moisture percent is between 4 and 6%, use moisture tolerant primer. If it is between 6 and 12%, use EpoChem technology. Seek Elastic Primer is one component primer that requires no mixing. After opening the pail, the material is ready to be used.
Seek Elastic FTP Primer is a three component primer. Start by removing components from the box. Seek Elastic FTP Primer Part A to Part B. And begin to mix thoroughly. Slowly add clean water to the mix and continue to mix for a minimum of two additional minutes. Spray primer and back roll. Typically applied when detailing is required over non-structural cracks up to 1 16th of an inch or cracks and joints over 1 16th of an inch up to 1 inch. Crack bridging. One or two component base coat material. 6 inches wide, centered over the crack and or joint. 23 DFT thickness is required. Do not apply aggregate. An optional 3 inch or 6 inch wide Seek Elastic FlexiTape heavy fabric strip may be embedded within the detail coat as reinforcement. Apply using a Fenelic resin core roller and special squeegee device. Apply base coat with a roller 6 inches wide centered over the joint or crack in a minimum thickness of 23 dry mils. Mixing for single component coatings. Premix single component product thoroughly prior to the application. Premix product for three minutes. Use a low speed drill and jiffy mixer to mix the materials. Mixing at too high speed or with the wrong mixer can introduce air bubbles into the coating and these bubbles can cause pinholes after application. The only two component which can be added into single component PU product is Accelerator, which speeds up curing time of a single component PU product. It is a small container added into the pail. Always premix the material in the pail prior to the addition of the accelerator. Add the accelerator slowly, and after it has been added, continue to mix the material for another three minutes. Begin by opening the pail of Seek Elastic 710 base and removing the plastic sheet over the coating. Thoroughly mix coating at low speed until a homogeneous mixture and uniform color is obtained typically for about one minute. Two component coatings. Mixing Sika's two component polyurethane must be done thoroughly to achieve proper performance. Add complete package of part B into the pail along with part A. Use the proper Sika recommended mixing blade and a slow speed drill. If mixing tint base formula, add the color pack into the mix. Mix for three minutes while using a margin trowel to scrape the sides during the mixing process. Thoroughly mix from the top of the mix to the bottom so that all the material is fully mixed. Take care not to introduce air into the mix by bringing the mixing paddle out of the material. Keep track of the lot number of the material that is being used on the job site. Seek Elastic 720 base is a two component coating. Slowly pour part B into part A. Thoroughly 
mix the combine material until a homogeneous mixture and uniform color is obtained, typically three minutes. Base coat. This is the waterproofing layer. Crack bridging. One or two component polyurethane base material is used. Curing time for the base coat is minimum of 16 hours at 70 degrees Fahrenheit and 50% relative humidity or until tack free before applying top coating. 23 mils DFT thickness is required. Do not apply aggregate to the base coat. Apply using 3 16 of an inch notched squeegee or trowel and a phenolic roller. Extend base coat over entire area, including previously detailed cracks and control joints. Intermediate coat, also known as the wear coat. This is the wear resistance layer, only for vehicular and heavy pedestrian traffic. Use a one or two component polyurethane or epoxy based material. Curing time is minimum 16 hours at 70 degrees Fahrenheit and 50% relative humidity or until tack free before top coating. A 12 to 20 mils DTF thickness is required, depends on the system being used. Aggregate required for seed and back roll is 10 to 15 pounds of silica sand per 100 square feet. For seed and lock, also seed to refusal, 20 to 40 pounds of silica sand per 100 square feet is required. Apply top coat using 3 16 of an inch notched squeegee or trowel and a phenolic resin core roller. One component Seek Elastic 715 top. Carefully begin by removing the lid. Thoroughly mix Seek Elastic 715 top for three to five minutes using a low speed mixer until a homogeneous mixture and color is obtained. Two component Seek Elastic 745 top. Begin by pre-mixing material and adding part B into the pail. Continue to mix both parts for three to five minutes until a uniform color is obtained. Apply at the recommended coverage rate. Apply aggregate evenly distributed at the appropriate rate evenly into the wet coating. Instead of throwing aggregate manually, another option is by using a blower. Seeding of aggregate means an even, light broadcast, short of refusal, and back rolled using a roller. Top coat. This is the skid resistance layer for vehicular and pedestrian traffic. One or two component polyurethane or epoxy based material. Curing time, minimum 16 hours at 70 degrees Fahrenheit and 50% relative humidity or until tack free. Should be 12 to 18 mils DFT thickness required depending on the system. Aggregate required for seed and back roll is 10 to 15 pounds of silica sand per 100 square feet. No aggregate is required for seed and lock on top coat only when intermediate coat is applied. Apply with 3 16 of an inch notched squeegee or trowel and phenolic resin core roller. Apply aggregate evenly, same as we did during the intermediate coat. Again, back roll aggregate into top coat. For seed and lock, there is no seeding of the aggregate into the top coat. Apply using a squeegee and back roll.
In all cases, installation mock-ups to verify application methods and substrate conditions, as well as desired skid resistance and aesthetics, are highly recommended. Maintenance. Clean with non-sudsing detergent and water and inspect regularly for mechanical damage. Snow removal equipment must have shoes, rubber tips, or small skis to prevent ruptures. The use of metal blades without protection is not recommended. Damaged areas should be repaired promptly. Remove delaminated coating back to well-adhered material and reinstall patch according to specified procedures. Do not use asphalt or tar modified products. Consult a secret representative for recommendations on top coat or wearing surface restoration. Typical problems and mistakes are blistering due to a wet substrate, water from concrete substrate, rain or dew. To repair these issues, cut the blisters and let them dry. Grind coating to sound and reapply coating. To prevent blistering, do not apply coating if rain is imminent. Check the moisture content by using the Tramex and check the dew point before application. Blistering due to thick coating makes the blisters look like either a small or large unbroken bubble in the coating surface. To repair, completely remove affected areas down to cured coating or substrate and reapply coating system. To prevent this frequently, check WFT during the application. During the application, back roll to eliminate low spot areas where self-leveling coating may pool. Blistering due to moisture contamination occurs in small clusters. In most cases, these are sweat droplets. To repair, grind to a smooth surface, clean surface using solvent, wipe and apply additional coating and match the area. Help prevent wearing headbands by workers is strongly recommended if the weather during the application is hot. Pinholes appear as bubbles. When these bubbles pop, they usually leave a round crater. The pinhole can be seen through the coating. On porous concrete, an aggressive shot blast can open the concrete pores and bug holes. Excessive aggregate can create air pockets and trapped in the wear coat when seeding to refusal with big aggregate. To repair, light abrasion with a wire grinder, clean the surface, apply one coat of recoat primer and lightly seed 15 pounds per square foot and apply an additional coating. To prevent, use high viscosity primers to help cover concrete pores. Check moisture content with Tramex before every application. Full DeckPro application.